Learning your child has a life-threatening illness is every parent's worst nightmare. But imagine then losing your job and financial security as well. That's what's happening to thousands of parents across the country who are taking time off to look after their sick children. I'm journalist Angela Walker and in this podcast I talk to inspirational people and discuss underreported issues. Today I'm in conversation with Christina Harris who's lost her job of 19 years because she's been taking taking time out to look after her daughter who's got leukemia. She's petitioning the government to change regulations to protect the jobs of people like her. Thanks for joining me, Christina. Um, I'm really sorry to hear that Sky's been unwell. Um, how is she at the moment? Um, Sky's she's currently doing really well. She's um, she's back at school. She just started secondary school and um, she's, yeah, she's doing really well at the moment. Uh, we did spend most of the summer in, in hospital, unfortunately, because she had an infection. Um, but she's off her antibiotics now and she's, she's doing okay at the moment. That's good. And it must be a relief for her to go to school and see her friends. A bit of normality, I guess. Yeah, she's, she loves it. And she's really enjoying her new school as well, which is lovely. And I think she needed a bit of a fresh start. So, yeah, it's, it's good. And I'm a mum myself, and I can only imagine how awful it is to learn that your child has got a serious illness. How are you coping? Um, I take one day at a time. Um, sometimes I take an hour at a time. Um, some days are obviously more challenging than others. Um, and I just try as I can to, to be strong for, for her and for her brother. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the best I can do. Could you tell us a bit about Skye's illness? When did you realise that she was unwell? Um, so a week before she was diagnosed, um, she was all day with a pain in her rib. Um, I didn't obviously think at the time it was anything serious, but I took her down to, to the doctors. This was a Friday afternoon. I took her to the doctors on the Monday and he checked over, listened to her and he thought it might be anxiety pains um so we kind of went home thinking that might be the case because she had suffered a little bit with anxiety just before then so um but i very quickly realized that it wasn't because she was complaining of the pain in in her sleep in the night so i knew it wasn't anxiety obviously so i took her down to a and e and asked for them for an x-ray of her lungs just to make sure there wasn't anything there uh, which they did and they did an ultrasound as well. And we saw three different doctors on this occasion because they all wanted a second opinion. Um, and it turned out she had a tiny little bruise on her on her lung, which they thought might be due to a fall or some kind of injury, but not nothing that we could remember she'd done. She hadn't done anything. Um, so they had sent us home with antibiotics, um, hoping it would kind of clear. And then we left it a couple of days and it didn't get any better, it got worse. And she was in a lot of pain, particularly at night time. Uh, so I took her back down to A&E and this was on the 7th of December, the day she was diagnosed in the middle of the night. And they did another X-ray on her lungs, which at this stage were both filled with pneumonia, which is what caused the pain. And then they moved us up to the ward, the children's ward, where they just ran routine blood tests um, as they do in a start antibiotics straight away and the blood came back really quickly and the doctor came in and told us she had leukaemia. That must have been such a shock, Christina. It was awful. I just, yeah, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't even talk, I couldn't even say anything to the doctor. I just, I just walked away crying. Um, yeah, it was horrible. I just, it didn't feel real at all and I, I didn't understand that it just happened so quickly and, you know, she had shown no obvious childhood cancer symptoms leading up to this. So it was a real, real shock. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So you're a working mum and what yeah. happened then when you told your employer, because, you know, Sky needs your help. She needs her mum to look after her. What happened when you told your boss that your daughter was really poorly? Um, I 
initially phoned my manager um, and told him, and obviously I've, I've worked with him for, for many years and he's a good friend of mine. And he, you know, obviously just said, you know, you know, just go and be with Sky, um, which was obviously what I was going to do regardless, because you, you know, you would drop anything to be with your child. Um, so we were very quickly rushed up to Great Ormond Street Hospital. Um, and after a few days, I got a call back from them and I spoken to the owners of the company and they just said, you know, just do be there for Sky. Don't even think about work. Um, you know, we'll help you as much as we can. Just be there for her now and we'll, you know, we'll deal with work in, in the new year. So I did that and yeah, which was lovely to hear because obviously I, I didn't want to worry about work as well. Um, at what point was it that the company turned around and said, well, you know, you, you're going to have to leave? She was diagnosed for Christmas. Uh, just after the new year, I got a call to say they, they were unable to pay me for the time I needed off with her, um, which I was, I think I, I, I was shocked about it because obviously I, I was hoping there might have been something in place, but there wasn't. Um, that took a little while to, to get used to the idea of, of no pay for unlimited amount of time. Um, so we just, I, I just obviously carried on looking after her for a few months and then I had a further meeting with them about six to eight months later. Um, but it wasn't until a year after that, I'd had a whole year off unpaid with her that they told me they couldn't hold my, my job open any longer. And how did that make you feel, Christina, at the time? Um, I, w I was shocked and and upset. I, I guess I was hoping, bearing in mind, I'd you know, been doing that same job for such a long time that there would have been some kind of middle ground. Um, I offered to work from home um, and I offered to come into the office on days where I was able to, where she might be attending school. But, um, yeah, everything I suggested wasn't, I was just told it wasn't going to work for the company. Um, research by the University of York called Make Every Child Count um, showed that around 90,000 children in the UK have got a life-limiting or life-threatening condition. That's an awful lot of children and an awful lot of parents in your situation. Now, I know that you would like to see some change. Tell us about this petition that you've started. So the petition is to um, to try and safeguard parents' jobs, basically, um, for the government to offer career breaks to parents who are off for an uncertain amount of time to care, you know, for the seriously ill child. Um, I'm not asking for it to be paid. I'm just asking for unpaid leave until you're in a position where you're able to return to your job, um, and th that is. That, yeah, that is basically the petition. Um, I mean, there's there's lot there's there's lots of other issues around the support that parents with ill children get. But yeah, I, I'm fighting this fight at the moment, and hopefully we'll we'll get somewhere with it. And employers will probably say, well, they have sympathy, but they need some kind of continuity. What what would yeah. you say to them? What kind of what are the practicalities that you could offer really that you could suggest would work for somebody in your situation who's got a really poorly child that they need to look after and balancing yeah. that with kind of you know the needs of a company um obviously i understand that um companies can't go without an employee for that amount of time i'm, I'm i wouldn't expect that no, no one can um what i was hoping could be implemented is that the parent take obviously a career break with unpaid leave and they will have a temporary um, member of staff come in for a, a bit like maternity or paternity leave if you like um, and then maybe with a view to extend it if the par parent needs a bit longer off with the child um, which obviously the government funds already so I don't see any reason why something similar couldn't be brought in to to help parents in this situation. It doesn't seem unreasonable to me that someone in your situation could take a year or so off and then somebody else could be brought in to, to cover that position on a temporary contract. Um, now, let's see, yeah. what kind of reaction have you had from people about your petition? I've had, I would probably say 98% has been amazing feedback. People, they have been in the same situation, um, 
almost sort of routine beyond for this to go through and people that are shocked have been in the situation years and years ago and they're shocked that nothing still hasn't been done about it and we're still in the same place as they might have been 20 years ago. Um, it's been amazing feedback. I've had so much support and, you know, people telling me, you know, or thanking me even for, for doing this because um, this is not for me. You know, I, I can't change what's happened to me. This is for future parents that might find themselves in, in the same unfortunate, awful situation. Um, I'm, I'm fighting a battle for them, basically. Um, yeah, so I, I realised that obviously no no companies can go without members of staff for a long period of time. And that's, that's not the aim of the petition. It's just to hold the jobs open, get um, hopefully funded by the government cover. And that way, you know, no one have to end up losing their house at the end of it. Now, let's have a look. Your petitions are over 60,000. I know if it gets to 100,000, it will be considered for debate by Parliament. And you have had a reaction yeah. from the government. Um, I'm going to read yes. that out. It says, yeah. the government understands the difficulties, worry and challenges faced by parents with seriously ill children. While the government's very sympathetic, it is not practical to provide a specific right to take time away from work and cover every challenging situation that an employee may face. Face. Many employers are already very supportive when people find themselves in these situations. The government currently has no plans to introduce a specific right to take a career break for parents with seriously ill children. However, the government is supporting legislation which will provide support for parents, including those caring for ill children or facing other difficult circumstances. So they're mentioning help for people with sick newborns and also plans to make flexible working easier. But what do you make of that government statement? I don't really think they're addressing my petition um, properly, if I'm being honest. I'm, I was a little bit disappointed with the response. Um, I don't feel they're actually really dealing with what I'm asking for. Offering a week's unpaid leave for carers per, per year. Um, if you have a two and a half year treatment plan with a very sick child, that's just a drop in the ocean. That's not going to benefit you um, very much, if, if at all. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed with the response so far, but I don't really think they're addressing the, the real issue here. None of those things they're offering really benefits what I'm petitioning for, unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to keep keep going and hopefully somewhere along the line I can get them to, to change their minds. How are you finding the strength to keep up with this petitioning? Because you've got so much going on looking after Sky and your own worries. Um, how are you managing to keep how, how are you had to keep going really? Keep, you know, had to keep it, going it has really. Been tough. It does take up a lot of my time. Um on a positive note, I would say it's kind of shifted my focus a little bit to it's very easy when you're in this situation and you have an ill child to focus on her health the whole time and and also the negative side of things and the worry and the what what ifs and the fear um and that has helped me a little bit to have a different focus and just change my direction of thoughts a little bit and all the amazing comments i'm getting from people on a daily basis are just wanting me to keep going What's next for Sky's treatment plan? Yeah, so she, she has chemo every single day um, and she will have chemo every single day until she finishes um, next year. And she, yeah, she's, she's obviously, hopefully we can stay out of hospital for a little while. Um, fingers crossed, because we, she has been very unlucky. We She's just caught everything going and but yeah, we've been very, very unlucky. I'm hoping we have a few weeks with no hospital visits. Um, in terms of treatment, she's in the maintenance part of her treatment, which is a two year long um, period where she has daily chemo and she has a chemo infused at the hospital once a month and she has uh, lumbar punctures and chemo injected into her spine at Great Ormond Street Hospital as well. Uh, that's the stage we're in at the moment, which in terms of Medication is a lot less than obviously it was right at the beginning when she was receiving her frontline, uh, front really, really intensive treatment. So she's feeling generally a little bit better. Um, not all the time, obviously she has, I think her norm is just 
her normal feeling now is chemo. You know, she doesn't know what it feels like not mm. to have chemo in her body because she has it constantly. Um, but she, yes, we reached a, a, a fairly not too intrusive phase of the treatment. And I'm just hoping that we can, we can stay out of hospital for a while. It sounds like you've sort of adjusted to a new norm, which is... Yeah. Which is yeah. getting you through it, really. And so... You know, you talking about the financial situation because, you know, you were at this job for 19 years and they've told you you couldn't keep the job open, even working part time. So how are you managing to cope financially, Christina? Um, so I'm receiving um, universal credit and there's some extra benefits that we get because Guy is ill. Um, so they are kind of kind of tying us over doesn't obviously cover all our bills but um when she was initially uh, diagnosed one of my friends said i would go find me page uh, which has helped us immensely over the last year and a half and that's the kind of what we fall back back on to when when we're struggling and also contacting charities there's a lot of charities that's helped us um a lot as well and yeah they've, they've been amazing but yeah it's, it is a constant battle and it is a constant worry and you're constantly filling in forms asking people for your help um but th there is no other choice unfortunately i just i have to keep keep going at it unfortunately well i really admire you christina for all your campaigning you know to to help other people in your situation because you know when you've got a, a sick child finances should be the last thing that you have to be worrying about so i'm really Absolutely, sorry that you, yeah. that you've been going through that thank you yeah i don't it, it shouldn't be a choice um it's really sad that we're in a situation where you have to choose between looking after your child or, or going to work um and that's yeah it's, it's just not right that really really needs to be urgently addressed well i wish you all the best and i wish sky all the best and her treatment so and, and a speedy recovery and i hope that she's completely clear very very soon thank you so much thank you christina for joining us thank you thank you for talking to me Today, I've been in conversation with Christina Harris. I hope you found the program interesting. If you have, please share, subscribe and review. That means the algorithms will make sure that more people get to hear this program. And if you'd like to get in touch, you can do so through my website, AngelaWalkerReports.com. Till next time, take care.